In my last few videos, we went over Shizue, Zawa and Ifrit as characters, so it's only fair that I talk about their master Leon Cromwell as well. So in this video, let's take a look at who Leon Cromwell actually is and his rise to power as a chosen hero and a demon lord. I'll also be covering how powerful he is in terms of his own individual strength as well as the military might of El Dorado. As always, there will be spoilers for his character and the story of Tensura, and feel free to give the video a like or even subscribing to the channel if you want more character breakdowns like this. Demon Noid. To start, Leon Cromwell was a stray other worlder similar to Hinata Sakaguchi, and in his previous world, he was the childhood friend of Chloe Albert and they grew up like siblings, so he was quite overprotective of her. But they were separated when they came to the Tensura world. Leon was teleported to 200 years in the past while Chloe arrived in the present. And in order to find her, Leon travelled the world until he eventually stopped at the Sorceress Dynasty Sarium where he met the queen at the time, Sylvia Elru, and became one of her students while also befriending her daughter, Elmasia Elru. Throughout the years, Leon continued searching for Chloe and he even went to the Dwelling of the Spirits. There he met the Fairy Queen Ramorous and had forced her to summon a powerful spirit of light to answer his questions, but the spirit wasn't able to so out of spite, he stole the Greater Fire Spirit Ifrit from there. Also, the Spirit of Light somehow recognized Leon as its new master, so Remorous named him as the Chosen Hero and gave him the divine protection of the spirits. And during his time as the Chosen Hero, he managed to evolve his unique skill into the ultimate skill, Purity King Metatron, which I'll talk more about in a bit. So moving on, Leon decided to abandon his status as the Chosen Hero and proclaim himself as the Demon Lord because he realized doing kind deeds weren't helping his search for Chloe. However, this angered the cursed lord Kazarium and he declared war on Leon, but he underestimated Leon and he was able to single-handedly defeat Kazarium and his forces. This victory was enough to give Leon a place on the Demon Lord Council and he was the most recent Demon Lord to have joined the council in over two centuries. Now after Leon officially became a Demon Lord, he would receive the title of Platinum Devil but he disliked the name so he changed it to Platinum Saber instead. Also when Leon joined, Guy Crimson became interested in him because he possesses an ultimate skill and the two eventually became good friends. Leon even visited Guy's domain often to exchange information but much to his annoyance and disgust, Guy loves to constantly make sexual advances on him despite always being rejected by Leon. But anyways, Leon used his position as a demon lord to access more forbidden knowledge to find Chloe and he eventually discovered the use of summoning to bring other worlders to the Tensra world. However, the existing method was quite time-consuming, inefficient and had very low rates of success, so he developed a new method called the Incomplete Summoning Ritual. This made the summoning process easier but the rates were still low. But since it made summoning easier, more people could carry out the summoning, so Leon secretly spread the knowledge across the western and eastern nations. He even outsourced his summoning activities to the Rosso family and Severus to increase the number of summoning attempts. But there's a reason why Leon was hated because this summoning method is very cruel as it will always summon children under the age of 10. And due to their young age, their magic skills were quite unstable and normally if they are untreated, they would die within 5 years. And because no one knew how to save the children except for Leon, many of the children were abandoned and left to die, but most of them are taken in by Leon so I guess it isn't that terrible. And yes, seeing how Leon treated Shizu, you would think that being taken in by him isn't exactly good either. But if you read the later parts of the story, he actually did care about her. Now I won't go into much detail about their relationship since I already talked about it in a previous video so be sure to check it out if you're interested. So with that, I wanted to go over some of the events involving Leon after Rimuru's arrival to the Tensra world. Leon would first meet him during Walpurgis, and although it was somewhat tense because of Rimuru's anger towards how Leon treated Shizu, at least they seemed like they're open to a conversation and Leon even invited Rimuru to visit his country. Now after Walpurgis, not much happened, but during the incident in the Holy Kingdom of Liberius, Leon found out that one of the other worthy children under Rimuru's care is named Chloe and after he confirmed her identity with Almasia, he left for Liberius. But when he arrived, Grandpa Rosso tried to turn Rimuru against him by revealing that he was behind all the inhumane summoning rituals. They obviously didn't fall for the trap, but they did pretend to fight while they sorted out the misunderstanding. Eventually, Leon finally saw Chloe again but the reunion was brief because as soon as she came into contact with the dying Hinata, she disappeared and this basically involves the time leap story arc. It's a whole can of worms that I won't be explaining here so you can just click on this video to find out more. So back to the topic at hand, Leon was left in a complete daze, but he quickly recovered so that he can help Rimuru fight the hero Kronoa. And during this, it was actually quite nice that he got to reunite with Ifrit or Chiris once more. Leon would then summon his mythical great rapier Flim Pillar, but Kronoa was too powerful and he was slowly being overwhelmed. Luckily, Rimuru managed to stop Kronoa with the anti-magic mask and save Chloe's consciousness as well. After the events at Lubarius, Leon, Luminous and Rimuru held a conference at Tempus, but they were later joined by Guy as well. Also, Leon finally learned why the Yellow Primordial has disappeared from El Dorado because Rimuru was oblivious and irresponsible enough to take her in as a subordinate, even naming her. 
But putting that aside, the meeting continued and Leon worked together with Rumuru and Luminous to deceive Guy about the situation with Chloe. And other than the brief confrontation between Chloe and Guy, the meeting ended without any further issues, although Leon almost lost his shit. Leon would leave Tempest and he tried convincing Chloe to go back to El Dorado with him, but sadly she refused. Now we won't see Leon again until the war with Phantom King Feltway and the Mana Smiker. Guy had called for an immediate Walpurgis in his domain because Feltway attacked him and taken control over the True Dragon Valzad. Leon and all the Demon Lords except for Dino attended the meeting to discuss about their plans for the upcoming war. Also during the meeting, Rimuru revealed that Michael has the ability to take control of people that possesses ultimate skills from the Angelic system and only Leon's Purity King Metatron was part of this series. And at this point, I didn't like Rimuru's choice to stay quiet about his skills and it was just selfish of him because he could have easily revealed that he knew how to remove the control circuit of Leon's ultimate skill and simply save them the trouble of him getting controlled. But whatever, Rimuru decided to send Diablo to Eldorado as reinforcements and Guy relocated his forces to Leon's domain as well. So the meeting ended and Leon would head towards Sarin because he wanted Almacia to contact her mother Sylvia to join their fight against Feltway. And normally Leon doesn't really speak his mind or even ask for help from anyone so it was quite shocking that he asked Almacia for help. But yeah, Eldorado was the first place to be attacked by Feltway and they were unable to contact Rimuru for help because of Valzad. Guy and the others headed out to buy time while Leon remained inside his palace and he deployed the full might of his forces. Only the Silver Knight Elros and Black Knight Cloud stayed behind to protect him. However, the battle soon reached his throne room as Yuki and the Modern Crown Troop would be the ones to engage him. Leon fought against Kigali and Laplace while Elros fought Tia and Cloud fought Footman but it was all a trick. Kigali was secretly communicating with Leon to formulate a plan for escape but it was soon stopped by Michael after he reinforced his control over the people under his domination. And with the arrival of Feltway, Leon fell under their control as well but he still retained his memories and knowledge. Sylvia arrived too late and she was now forced to fight Leon. Now, Leon could defeat Sylvia if he gotten serious but because he retained his thoughts, he was intentionally holding back to avoid harming his master. However, when Rimuru brought reinforcements, Feltway ordered Leon and the others to retreat while Jahil destroyed the palace. In the heavily star palace, with Leon now part of their forces, Feltway and Michael established a new chain of command. Leon was assigned to be part of the Seven Angels of Death, responsible for engaging in single and multi-personnel operations. Then it was decided that Leon along with Fan, Pico, Gracia and Dino would attack Dagru's domain in the Holy Void Damagania. When they arrived, Leon fought Dagru's brother Glassrock briefly and they were quite close in strength, but as soon as Fan turned Dagru to their side, they stopped fighting and Leon would turn his attention to Ultima and Vera instead. Luckily, Rimu arrived just in time and with help from Seal, Leon's control circuit was removed and he regained control over his body. However, this was a trap by Michael all along and when he appeared, he took down Leon and the others through his time stop ability so they were forced to retreat while Rimu dealt with Michael. Eventually, Michael was defeated but Leon was still unconscious so Diablo brought him back to the medical facility in Tempest to recover. But he was able to make a quick recovery and when they received reports that Siren was attacked by Jahir and Zelario, he decided to join Benimaru as reinforcements. Leon and the others arrived in Siren sometime after Sylvia and her team had returned to the battlefield and he immediately flew to confront Zelario. With Soe supporting Leon, he took out his flame paler to begin fighting Zelario and even though they were both at a disadvantage in terms of existence value, Leon was still capable of fighting Zelario equally through his skills and techniques. He even earned the respect of Zelario but they had to stop their battle when they were informed about the imminent disaster that the rampaging melee was about to bring. Leon decided to ask Zelario for help but because he was still under the control of Michael, he was unable to accept. Seal soon reached out to the both of them, offering to change their angelic system skills into something of similar power. Leon knew this had removed written all over so he accepted the offer without hesitation and his Purity King Metatron was transformed into the ultimate skill, like King Surya, a more powerful version of his previous skill. Now when Milim came into view, Leon got into position and unleashed 100 Breaker and attacked the fast destructive light beams infused with disintegration, but Milim was unfazed. However, when Benimaru attacked with prominence acceleration, Milim finally slowed down so Leon used 100 Fold Prison to form a cage of disintegration around her. And with the combined skills of everyone, it bought enough time for the effects of Regalia Dominion to be removed by Seal and Rimuru soon left with Milim towards the Barren Lands. Now the battle in Saren soon ended and Leon seemed to have stayed behind with Zelario while Jahil escaped back to the Heavenly Star Palace. So yeah, for now that is all for Leon's story and I think he'll still have some prominent appearances in future volumes. With that said, let us go over Leon's domain and his forces in more detail. So the Golden Valley Eldorado was first established by Leon not long after he declared himself as a demon lord. Eldorado is located on a separate continent southwest of the main continent and it's estimated to be larger than Australia. His master Sylvia was the one that helped him to establish the city while Amasia provided funding for the construction. 
Now, as for the population of El Dorado, it was estimated to be less than 20 million and they mostly consisted of other worlders, orphans, other races and various oppressed margins like demonoids, people that underwent monsterization. And I think the reason Leon took in many other worlders, especially the children, because he felt responsible for spreading the knowledge of incomplete summoning and he probably wanted to help them since he knew how to stabilize their magic use. But moving on, for the city itself, the streets and cityscape were all designed based on magic circles which serves to provide two functions, one to make the city feel more organic and aesthetically pleasing and two to provide magical effects to the city. And because of the scale of the magic circle, he was protected by a powerful tactical grade magic barrier that provided protection as well as the additional effects of search enemy and counter magic. Search enemy is used to immediately detect anyone that enters the city without permission, while counter magic could repel almost any magical attack from outside the city, likely created to stop the yellow primordial's random attacks. Now besides that, on the continent itself, there's an active volcano that is constantly releasing volcanic gases and dust to the surroundings. But because this is a city of magic, they utilize magic to control the wind to keep them from falling onto the city. In addition to that, the lands around the city are quite fertile and there are various deposits of minerals and ores with gold ores being their most abundant resource. I guess that's why Leon named his nation El Dorado. Also, there was a gate of hell located near the city so they had to constantly deal with demon attacks as well. And because the gate was guarded by the yellow primordial June, she has also occasionally come out to attack the city for fun with her nuclear magic. Leon tried many times to negotiate with her and to seal the gate but all attempts had failed so now it's just a normal routine for the military of El Dorado. So the main military force of El Dorado is called the Magical Knight Order and they are divided into six branches that all have a specialized job. They are also apparently color-coded similar to the Power Rangers. Having said that, let's start with the Silver Knight Order and they seem to be the main fighting force. They are led by Arrows who also serves as the commander of the entire Magical Knight Order and he is Leon's most trusted lieutenant and friend. Next is the Black Knight Order which is similar to the Silver Order. Cloud is the leader of this order and he is considered to be the strongest among the entire order. He mostly serves as Leon's personal bodyguard and he was the one that taught Shizu how to fight when she was young. Continuing on is the Blue Knight Order and they specialize in reconnaissance work like gathering information, infiltration, surveillance and raiding. And their leader is the Blue Knight Oxian. Then we have the White Knight Order that specializes in providing support like healing and they are led by the White Knight Martel. The Red Knight Order is next, they are led by Fran and they are responsible for offensive tactics, while the last one is called the Yellow Knight Order with Kizona being the leader and they mainly specialize in defensive tactics. Now as for how strong Leon's subordinates are, I am unsure but I think it's safe to say that the normal knights should have at least a Calamity class threat level, while the 6th lieutenants might have threat levels ranging from the upper Calamity to lower Disaster. But I would love to hear your own thoughts on the Magical Knight Order and which of them are your favorites, so be sure to leave a comment down below. And before I end the video, let's go over some of Leon's skills and abilities. So like I said, he managed to evolve his unique skill when he was still a chosen hero into the ultimate skill Purity King Metatron. Now although he loses the skill later on, I think we should still go over what it does and it basically gives the user the ultimate power of the holy attribute and it's also a power that specializes in mass annihilation. Because with this skill, Leon can freely manipulate the strongest holy magic disintegration into any form that he wants, like covering his entire body and weapon with it to disintegrate anything that he touches, and he could even fire disintegration repeatedly without needing to rest or stop. So you can imagine how much destruction he can cause if he fights seriously, especially if you pair that with his fighting style that prioritizes speed and aggression. He can basically fight on par with individuals that far exceed his own existent value. However, he did lose Pretty King Metatron after Seal out of the skill and transform it into the ultimate skill like King Surya and it works exactly like Metatron albeit with an improved performance. Additionally, he was able to use all types of elemental spirit magic because he was an ex-chosen hero and he's a master at different forms of summoning magic as well. But skills aside, Leon did possess some powerful equipment as well like Flame Pillar, a mythical great rapier, Golden Circle, a legendary great shield and his golden armor, likely to be of the similar grade and it's unfortunate that we don't really know what kind of effects they possess. <laughs> Anyways, that's everything about the ex-chosen hero turned demon lord Leon Cromwell and it was quite surprising how much involvement he has with the overall story. I personally like his character a lot even though he has done some questionable things all for one girl but I think how they portrayed him as the misunderstood anti-hero with a kind heart makes him less stereotypical and more interesting. But what about you? What do you think of Leon Cromwell and do you like or dislike him? Also, what are your opinions on the way he treated Shizu? I would love to see everyone's comments down below. Now if you enjoyed the video and want more, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button to stay up to date with all my content. Thanks for watching and as always, stay safe everyone.